All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Late Night Shots Podcast, episode 84. It's been a while. We're back. Had finals. No, I did not pass, if that was your question. Did all right. I needed a 198 out of 200 to pass. Did not happen. I mean, you know, I cheated. Still failed. Probably should be saying this on YouTube, but oh well. So, yeah, so That's we're back. Nice. Topics for discussion today. Some big ones. Maybe a while ago, maybe now, but obviously I'm a Penn State fan. Max Dean's coming to Penn State. That's huge. You know, we'll find out where he fits in. Talk is Michael Beard is redshirting because of injury, so leaves a break spot for Max Dean or Aaron Brooks to bump up, whoever feels like it, to be honest, right there. You know, Kirk fits in nice at heavyweight and Storachi at 74, so those aren't going to be problems. You know, I doubt Dean can cut to 74, even if that was an option. But, you know, Definitely Evan not. Wick is still in the transfer portal, and that's going to be talked about, you know. I think the main thing was Cal Poly, since his brother Xander is at Cal Poly. But, you know, Dean was supposed to be a done deal to Michigan, so. Um, you ben, know. <laughs> that's going to have confirmed that it's literally just between Penn State and Cal Poly. Yeah. Yeah. And See, I where this comes to mind to is if he goes to Cal Poly, I respect the decision. But his natty hopes are gone. Yeah. If he goes to Penn State, he has one year left in college. He can go back to California or whatever the fuck he wants. You know, just go back home, see his family. If he goes to Penn State, that's his one last chance to get a national title. I was not going to take him. Virginia Tech's not going to take him. Obviously, people say just go to Iowa. That's not how the fuck this works. They're not just going to bench Marinelli yeah. for Evan Wick, who's just coming there. You know, obviously, Marinelli has ties to the Wisconsin program, too. But. You know, Penn State's, that's the best training room in the country when you look at it thoroughly. And he's Hard, not finding right. a better, he's not finding a better team than that. To go practice with, not find a better coach than that, obviously. So, yeah, no, I hope he goes yeah. to Penn State. I, if it happens, you know, you have to think about it. Like, we talked to Evan Wick before. He's always say, oh, I miss Cali, all that. You know, uh, if he goes back, I won't be mad. I don't think anybody's going to say anything about it. If he goes to Penn State, you're always going to have the bullshit, but. Iowa's entire team is like double redshirt seniors. I don't even know what you'd call it at this point. But yeah, that, that's some be, news. It would just be kind of weird as like a as a fan of way for him to go back to Cal Poly. And I uh, again, I I understand going home, but nobody would watch it. Yeah, it's it's Penn State, dude. If you can go, go. I don't know if they've reached out to him. Um, I would, I'd be really, really surprised if they didn't. Yeah, I think um, it would make a weird situation. Griffith, uh, with Facundo coming in, although they redshirt him. Yeah, no, they wouldn't because Wick would have one year left and he would be out and boom. Uh huh. And that's a juggernaut year for Pensy. That's a potential seven national champs if everything goes yeah. perfect. Right. Mm-hmm. What was what was Wick's like most recent NCAA's finish? Fourth. Then third and third again. He pinned Marsteller twice, lost him in that match. He's 16 3, Alex Marinelli, the first time they wrestled. So <laughs> that happened. I think Chenzo is the only guy yeah. who's ever bonused him in his career. Hmm. And that was barely. Chenzo's on fire, too. You know, now that we talk about 165 it. 165 is, if I remember right, 165 is wide open ish. I don't know who wins between him and Keegan. Evan, 99% of the time, will win that match, and it's not really close. But I don't know. I mean, who expected no, no, Keegan no, to no, 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 third in the no, country? No, no. See, now you're just disrespecting Evan Wick just because he got by Mike Howdake. No, hang on. I'm a huge fan of Evan Wick. You're obviously not you're comparing him to fucking Keegan, Keegan O'Toole. O'Toole. No, you're not. I'm also a huge fan of Keegan O'Toole. Dude, like, you'll find out. He's third place as a freshman. Credit to him, but they're a love of this shit. Marinelli would have beaten him if time came in that match. If this man didn't break your rib against Griffith, I already called it. Griffith is head above the field. Makai is not returning to the same level he was. I wish he could. It's not happening. Griffith would have. Well, he's also Griffith would have taken a two-zero tool, probably like four or five points. Chenzo obviously beats him. Marinelli beats him by a good amount. Wick is on that same level with those two guys. Chenzo is just the worst style match for him. It's proven time and time again. Every time they wrestled, him versus Marinelli is a one-point match every time. If you right. move Marinelli to Wisconsin. And move Wick to Iowa, Wick would beat him every single time they wrestle. And it wouldn't be close. Talent gap wise, Wick and Griffith are the two most naturally talented guys in that field. 
and Mikhail Lewis. If you count pure raw athleticism in that. Wick goes to Penn State. There's almost a 90% chance he wins that title. And, and not by a close margin. Okay. No, no after what, it's, it's really not after by what a close Keegan margin. just did to an admittedly hurt Anthony Valencia. Okay. Who's Keegan beat the fucking brakes off of him? The same guy who got majored by Ethan Smith at Nationals? That Anthony Valencia? Ethan Smith's good. Ethan Smith's good. Okay. It's not a bad loss. <laughs> What did Valencia do in Nationals? He was injured the whole tournament. You can't compare that. He's like, oh, he beat an injured dude, so now we'll give him that. No, it's, it's not that simple. Eh. No one Where has Valencia ever placed, now that I think about it? Huh? I don't even think Valencia's ever placed, now that we talk about it. And if no, he has, he, it's like seventh. Even... Yeah. Yeah, now you're on some bullshit talking about that. Let me check. Uh O'Toole plays third in the watered out year. Like I like the dude, I have nothing against him. I'm not on the hype just yet. If he does something this year, sure. But there was nothing in that performance at Nationals to show me anything. Granted, there was nothing in Griffith's performance in twenty twenty to show me anything, but you know. He's already shown that he's better than this entire field. Uh, All right. Now that we talk about this, I don't got that much time, so we'll hop right into Pan Am's, whatever team we're sending there. Obviously, the main guy people want to see, Gable Stevenson. Do I think he wins Pan Am's? Yes. Do I think he takes his way through Pan Am's? Probably. If we had, like, Nashon Garrett at 61 kilos, we would literally sweep Pan Am's. Probably, I, I don't know. Sean Garrett versus Jay Nyerman's going down soon also. Oh, when? I don't know. I just saw the post on Ironman's thing. Obviously, I think Ironman wins that one, but at 65. Uh, uh, Nashawn Garrett at 61 is 65. Something. Oh, the match is taking place at 65? Yeah, most likely. I don't think Ironman's making 61. That is, that's true. Now that we talk about it, 149 is going to be the, one of the most interesting weight class next season if it does go down. And what I'm hearing about Penn State is uh, Rob Howard, 25, Roman Brav Young, 33, Van Ness, 41, Nick Lee, 49. Had Nick Lee said something about uh, Roman at 41? Yeah, but I don't see Van Ness going 33. It's either Van Ness or Bo Bartlett at 41. That would make the best sense. Because Nick well, Lee at this point in time, the way he's peaking just perfectly, he so may just be the guy to knock off Yanni's streak. What? It's just that I had heard that they're talking about Van yeah, Ness people, at 57. Yeah, on the, on the Instagram, I don't know why. That's, that's a fucking joke. I, I don't see that happening. Not on Instagram. Like, yeah, um, the flow I wrestling think it was at one point. I think it was at one point it was in the in the projected Penn State lineup. I don't know. Yeah, for flow. That that was absolute bullshit. I was looking through that. Can't people wait to were see talk, RBY People were talking about yeah. Kirk cutting to uh, 97 when the man's pushing 260 right now. That's that's stupid. Yeah. Uh, um, that would be a good thing to talk about because Cassiope just kind of mauled Don Bradley in that match too. I don't think we even did an episode after sure. then. And then, uh, obviously, Gwiz is probably the worst possible matchup for Cassiope. A big dude who takes Roman calculated at, shots. Roman but, at, yep. Roman at 141. Probably not beating Ironman, I'll be honest. I, I think. Grind out didn't have beaten I fix, no fear that Yanni whooped him. Yanni's 49, most likely. And I've really beaten Yanni, yeah. I think he's. I think he's. He's pretty well sized for like sixty five kilos. I feel like it's not. I mean, he sixty five is still one forty three. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have to be cutting for forty nine either. It's come to the point where like, there's a guy to challenge him now. Last year there wasn't. Last twenty twenty, Nick Lee wouldn't have done shit to Yanni. Now yeah. it comes to the point where like, Nick Lee's on that level, and Nick Lee, is the favorite now, most likely. So do you think Yanni moves up specifically to wrestle Nick Lee? I think they both just move up in general because 
I don't think Ironman's on the level of any of them anymore, to be honest. Obviously, he can still catch somebody. I think Yanni's probably the one he's going to catch, if anybody. I think Nikolai's too good with his game planning for that. And obviously, yeah, I remember just the way he wrestles. I remember watching their finals match. I was, I was rooting for Ironman in that finals match, too. And I just wanted Nick to, like, catch a leg and get cradled. But it, it, it just never <laughs> bloody materialized. Who's the one who said Ironman will never lose also? Huh? Remember when you said Ironman was never going to lose? I said that. Yes, you did say that, actually. So, I'm not going to let you forget about that. But, yeah. Um, like like I said, he'd have an undefeated season? Yeah. Well, okay. Besides besides that last loss to Nick Lee, because he, he beat Nick Lee. At the Big last loss to Nick Lee was kind of his most important match. You can't that say besides that, is- that. That's losing that final is the most important match, right? And you can't even say Ironman yes. got robbed or anything. Like you go back to one match no, over some guy got, got robbed. No, that that's that's a fair match that was wrestled. You know, next time, you know, Ironman scored one take on two matches. That also has to be talked about. Yeah. And if it, and yeah. it was kind of lucky, and it's most likely never gonna happen again. Sure. But yeah, now that we talk about it, uh. If he moves it to 49, Sasso and O'Connor are both coming back. That's also huge. I I feel like obviously they could they're most likely gonna beat them. That also comes yeah. to say that that's gonna be that could be three national champs in one weight class. Yeah. Obviously it's not yeah. gonna be like a reincarnation of the 2008 bracket of 149, but still some good to look. Ooh, cutting it, cutting it close. Not really. That was seven. If you think about like how, what well, do you think college wrestling has progressed since? Yeah, but those were just like the baddest fucking dudes of all time. Like the fact that Josh Torella, JP O'Connor were regarded as the worst guys in that weight class. Yeah. But, it says um, something. Yeah. Also, a quick reminder, if you guys have gotten this far in the di- in the podcast, Discord link in bio if you're watching this on YouTube. Join that. We're just chilling there. Trying to get more people to join it. Just uh, add another social media that I'm on. Why not? I'm always active there every day. I've got nothing better to do with my life. Back to this. Yeah. But, no, genuinely, I think, though, Sasso hasn't progressed that much. That's genuinely my, what my concern is. Yeah, it's not weird. He was a... It, Ohio State recruits so well. There's no one in their single lineup that wasn't a big name in high school. But, like, yeah, Sasso just hasn't Sasso was the really big name, lived though. up to it yet. Huh? Sasso was the big name. That's true, yeah. He was, like, their biggest recruit. You know, look now, you know, Feldman, you know, I've said it right now, Feldman's a guy who may just be the best dude in the country, regardless of weight class. If you look at what he can do in college, he could very well go out and win a – National title after Paris, Kirk, and those guys are gone. So, do oh, I think so, he can so beat Mullen? Right? Yeah, do I think he can beat Mullen? Possibly. I don't want to make a call on that. I think it's a toss up. If I'm looking at it right now, Mullen's a sophomore right now. He's right? the number one guy heavyweight. Feldman's a junior, number one in 220. He might bump up and take that super matchup. So, that's going to be interesting to see. Ooh, I want to see that. Yeah. All right, is, Feldman, been, is Feldman from Jersey? Uh, he's from uh, Malvern Prep in PA. He would be a heavyweight, but they have a top five heavyweight. Uh, yeah. Just put this into perspective. Feldman majored the number two, 220 in the country. Who's a senior when he was a sophomore? Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't there something that wasn't like Nick Feldman? I can't remember if it was Nick Feldman or Christian Carroll. Wasn't it one of them who like bulked up like a ton? Like, they were, like, a 182 Feldman. or something. Feldman was a 160 yeah. coming into high school. Then 182, Seriously? 220. But, uh, or one, 182, 220, and then whatever. But, yeah, we've been talking for a while. Any final topics? Um, no, nothing particularly comes to mind. Um, I'm kind of bummed about – I, I know I said – I got to go to the one. Jaden Cox unleashing the wrath of God. How do we feel about this? <laughs> Genuinely, I don't well, okay. know if you can beat Nate Jackson in ninety two. Like, it's been said Jaden Cox isn't like a high volume offense guy, 
the thought of him deciding to do high volume offense kind of like excites me. And also it's a little odd because like he's been on this level for so, so long. Um, and it's kind of like crazy when you see, realize like, he's only 26. Movie. Yeah. He's been at this super high level. I remember, dude, I've seen, I've watched like his sophomore high school year highlights so many times and it's literally crazy. He looks like a grown ass man. What I want to talk about is, Fact that we go to ninety two. New Jersey RTC. Yeah, that that New Jersey RTC. Miles Martin's coming back too. One yeah. thing I did want to talk about: we look at ninety two. Top three guys in the world are from the U.S. Jaden <sighs> Cox, Colin Moore, and Nate Jackson. I would make arguments for ninety two. I, I completely have no idea what the world rankings at 92 look like, so I'll take your word Shit. on that. <laughs> Shit. That's the See, exact that's my, reason I didn't have – I don't know if Jaden Cox beats Colin Moore either at 92. Like that's, like, that's a genuine topic for concern on my half. See, I'm curious just because, like, I went – like, um, Aspen was talking about how, like, it's not that long ago that we had – that we didn't have the whole Olympic and non-Olympic weights. It was just all of the weights. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that would be so much better now because you kind of get into this situation now of 10 and six weight classes where whenever those other weight classes come in, they're instantly regarded as weaker. If they were permanent weight classes, athletes that are actually that size or like tweeners who just happen to perform their best at that one weight class, yeah. it would make it a lot stronger. Now, maybe I'm biased for this as a dude who's like, you know, I'm all about team USA and if, we had all 10 weights, we would perform really, really well at World and Olympic tournaments. Yeah, it also but, has to come with the U.S. is like pretty damn stupid when we go about this stuff too. Just who we wrestle. At what that? No, just like the way – like we should have qualified 65, right? Yeah. You know, well, obviously okay. you could say that's Zane's fault, Ken Ams, but – In the world. Just the way we went about it and the way other countries go about it is so much smarter. Because yeah. if you look at it, there's two ways to think about it. Beck Bilotov didn't want to wrestle, or he purposely wanted to wrestle at last chance and try to get a certain somebody from the USA not qualified. Like, like this is a dirty fucking game. Like, it's a, not everybody plays by the rules in this. Like, guys do shit for a reason. Yeah. Obviously, you run to a heavyweight. Gable, there's no chance he wasn't going to qualify. Granted, Guz already qualified yeah. the spot. You know, yeah. obviously... It's going to come down to the fact where Gable can get a medal or not, right? Same thing with Snyder in this perspective, right? He's already fifth in the world, I think, right now. Yeah. You know, if Snyder doesn't get the medal, that's Snyder versus Cox match is coming. You know, I kind of just want to leave it at that. So, uh, thank you guys for listening to Late Night Shots podcast. This is our return. We'll be back tomorrow, day after, whatever. I feel like this is going to be airing Saturday when I wake up, if it's before noon, but um, yeah. So thank you guys for listening to Late Night Shots podcast episode eighty four, and we we'll see you guys again next time.